What if Anakin was granted the rank of Master? Anakin, once gaining the rank, would then have access to the Jedi Archives. Here, he would study for countless hours all aspects of the Force, trying to figure out how to save Padme, all the while spying on the Chancellor, no longer needing him. Palpatine was surprised by the Jedi move and knew they were hot on his tail. After the defeat of Grievous, Mace Windu moved in on the Chancellor to see that he let go of his emergency power because the war was all but over. Palpatine would insist that there's new details of a Separatist super weapon in development and the Republic needed him more now than ever. Mace demanded that this play out in the Senate instead of Palpatine's office. He would regret this, as Palpatine was a masterful politician and the Senate was his playground. He would frame the Jedi of a coup, interfering with the Republic's efforts to end the war. He would play a manipulated hologram framing Mace Windu as the poster boy for this movement. Order 66 was on the horizon, but Anakin, still a Jedi, was at the temple. The Galactic Senate, now swayed by Palpatine's cunning words, views the Jedi not as guardians but as impediments to peace. A critical vote looms, aimed at disbanding the Jedi Order, branding it a dangerous cult under the guise of ensuring the Republic's safety. Amidst this turmoil, Anakin, entrenched in his studies, uncovers ancient secrets that hint at powers beyond the dark and light sides of the Force, potentially offering a way to save Padme. With the Galactic Senate now squarely against the Jedi, Swayed by Palpatine's betrayal of them as peace obstructors, the Republic moved swiftly. The resolution to label the Jedi as an illegal function passed overwhelmingly, sealing their fate. As Order 66 unfurled, clone troopers stormed the Jedi Temple under the guise of enforcing a peaceful disbandment. Palpatine's assurance of no harm when speaking to the Senate was a mere facade. His true aim was their utter annihilation, a necessary purge to conceal his Sith identity and secure his grip on the galaxy. As the temple fell under siege, clone troopers commenced their attack, a narrative Palpatine would later twist to paint the Jedi as aggressors. Amidst the chaos, Anakin, within the archives, leaped into action. His intervention tilted the scales, enabling more Jedi to survive the initial onslaught. Despite his efforts, the casualties were significant. Anakin's presence not only saved lives, but also sowed confusion among the clones, unprepared for a Jedi of his caliber to oppose them, altering the fate of many. Surviving the attack, council members Kit Fisto, Sacy Ten, Agent Kolar, Mace Windu, and Anakin fled into hiding. Off-world members perished, with Yoda and Obi-Wan as the exceptions. They convened on an Outer Rim world, unified by a singular mission to rescue as many Jedi as possible. However, they faced a galaxy where both the Republic and its citizens stood against them. Unable to reach Padme and failing to make contact, Anakin informed the Council of his need to return to Coruscant, driven by the peril facing innocent lives. Recognizing the risk, Obi-Wan insisted on going with him. Arriving to find Padme's apartment swarmed with clone guards, they stealthily incapacitated a pair, wearing their armor for a disguise. This ruse allowed them to infiltrate the building. Inside, Anakin discovered a hollow recording of Padme going into labor, being led away by clone troopers, a moment that solidified his resolve and urgency. Utilizing the Jedi mind trick, they extracted Padme's location from the clones. She was at a medical facility in the industrial district known as the Works. Anakin and Obi-Wan's arrival, however, sprung a trap. They were confronted by the Sith Lord Darth Maul, freed by the clone troopers during Order 66 from Ahsoka's custody on Palpatine's orders to enlist him once again. Maul was a daunting obstacle. Anakin's plea for Padme was met with chilling news from Maul. She had perished in childbirth along with their offspring. Their resolve stealing, Anakin and Obi-Wan refused to accept Maul's words at face value. The air crackled with tension as they readied themselves for confrontation. Maul sensing their unwavering determination ignited his double-bladed lightsaber, the sinister glow illuminating the dim surroundings. The ensuing duel was fierce, with Anakin channeling his anguish and Obi-Wan his calm mastery of the Force. Despite Maul's ferocity and cunning, the pair proved formidable. Mid-battle, Anakin's focus shift. He sought not just to defeat Maul, but to push through to the truth about Padme. In a critical moment, leveraging a distraction created by Obi-Wan, Anakin disarmed Maul, pressing him for the truth. Under duress, Maul sneered, revealing that Padme had indeed been taken to the facility, but her fate was unknown to him. His task had been solely to delay them, and in that moment, a shuttle took off. Anakin could sense Padme's presence aboard the ship. Realizing she was out of his reach in pure rage, he struck down Maul. With Padme vanished, leaving no trace nor leads, the situation grew increasingly dire. Obi-Wan, acutely aware of Anakin's spiraling despair and rage, stood by his side, 
The Jedi Code might forbid such emotions, but Obi-Wan recognized the unique torment his friend faced. It was Anakin's profound love for Padme, not just raw anger, that fueled his actions. In this moment of crisis, Obi-Wan chose empathy over the strict adherence to the Code, hoping to steer Anakin away from the path that could lead to destruction. Realizing they needed more allies, Obi-Wan reached out to Bail Organa, the Alderaan Senator. Known for his discreet support of the Jedi in opposition to Palpatine's regime, could be a crucial asset. Bail's network extended deep into the Republic. Bail responded to Obi-Wan's call with grave concern. He understood the stakes, not just for Anakin and Padme, but for the galaxy. The loss of Padme Amidala, a vocal advocate for peace and democracy, would be a blow to the growing resistance against Palpatine. Bail committed his resources to the search, initiating a quiet inquiry among his contacts and the few Republic loyalists still unswayed by the Empire's propaganda. Meanwhile, Padme successfully gave birth to Luke and Leia. She and her children were transported to a secret location known only to a select few, Mount Tantus. It was here that she and her children would live their lives, hidden from the galaxy at large. While their residence at Mount Tantus might seem like a prison, they were not treated as prisoners. Emperor Palpatine, for reasons known only to him, ensured that they had a comfortable living area with freedoms to roam the facility and its surroundings, just not the freedom to leave. Anakin and Obi-Wan knew their paths would diverge for a time. Obi-Wan had to return to the few surviving Jedi, aiding in their efforts to regroup and resist where they could, a beacon of hope in the shadow of the Empire's rise. Anakin, on the other hand, was driven by a singular purpose, to find Padme. His heart ached with a need to ensure her safety and that of their children, even though he was unaware of the birth of Luke and Leia. In his quest, Anakin reconnected with Ahsoka, his former Padawan, whose fate had been uncertain since the fall of the Republic. Their reunion was a poignant reminder of the bonds formed in battle and complexities of their shared past. Rex, who had removed his inhibitor chip and thus resisted Order 66, shared with Anakin the grim reality of the order that had turned the clone troopers against their Jedi commanders. Rex revealed his mission to free the clones from the control of the inhibitor chips, a noble endeavor that aimed to restore the agency and dignity of his brothers. Inspired by his resolve, Ahsoka and Anakin agreed to support him, recognizing the importance of his mission not just for the clones, but as a symbol of resistance against the Empire's tyranny. With a renewed sense of purpose, Anakin and Ahsoka set forth on their own journey to find Padme. They navigated the galaxy, evading Imperial forces and gathering information from a network of allies who opposed the Empire. Each clue, each whisper of Padme's whereabouts fueled Anakin's determination a beacon guiding him through the darkness. Roughly a year had passed since Anakin started his search. In that time, Rex had managed to gather a formidable force of clones who had either removed their inhibitor chip or was deactivated over time. They had conducted several missions against the Empire, aiming to free their brothers from the control of the chips and strike against Imperial facilities that posed a threat to the galaxy's freedom. Recently, Rex uncovered the location of Mount Tantus, a facility shrouded in secrecy and rumored to be involved in heinous experiments on the clones. Seeing an opportunity to both free these clones and possibly uncover valuable intelligence against the Empire, Rex decided it was time for a bold move against the Stronghold. However, he knew that the mission's success hinged on having more than just a small army of clones. He needed allies with experience, strategic minds, and a personal stake in the fight against the Empire. Rex reached out to Ahsoka and Anakin, sharing his plans to infiltrate Mount Tantus and free the clones imprisoned there. For Anakin, the mission represented a glimmer of hope, not just to strike a significant blow against the Empire, but also to possibly uncover clues about Padme's whereabouts. The chance that Mount Tantus could hold an answer to her fate made the mission even more critical. Ahsoka and Anakin agreed to join Rex in his mission, pulling their resources, knowledge, and skills. The trio along with the assembled force of liberated clones began the meticulous planning and preparation needed to take on such a fortified facility. Rex had some inside help from the clones who didn't agree with what was happening at Mount Tantus. They sent him information that was crucial for making a smart attack plan. Among these secrets shared, there was talk about a special project related to cloning and the force. This part caught Anakin's attention right away. So they came up with a plan. 
Rex and his team would sneak into Mount Tantus to free the captured clones and start an uprising from the inside. This chaos would be their cover. While Rex handled this, Anakin and Ahsoka had another mission. They were going to dig into the Force cloning project to find out what was really going on. Anakin and Ahsoka knew this was risky, but they also knew it was important. If they could understand this project, maybe they could find a way to stop it. Or even better, they might find clues about where Padme was. On the day of the mission, everyone was on edge. They knew what they had to do, but it was going to be tough. Rex and his team moved first. They had to be like shadows, getting the imprisoned clones out without drawing too much attention. Once they started the uprising, the base would be in chaos. That was Anakin and Ahsoka's cue to slip in and find the information on the Force project. The plan was in motion. They moved through the shadows, making their way to the heart of the base where the secret project was located. Inside, they found more than what they bargained for. They found a group of children, all younglings of Jedi, who were being tested on and locked up like animals. The sight filled their hearts with a mix of anger and sorrow. They knew they couldn't leave without freeing these innocent lives. But just as they were preparing to rescue the children, Anakin's attention was diverted by a familiar voice. A voice that he would recognize anywhere. It was Padme. She was screaming, pleading to be let go. Clone troopers were trying to take her away from the base. Ahsoka, noticing the conflict in Anakin's eyes, urged him to chase after Padme. She promised to take care of the children, telling him, Go Anakin, save Padme, I'll free the young ones. Trusting Ahsoka to handle the situation, Anakin ran as fast as he could towards the sound of Padme's voice. Using the force with fierce determination, Anakin made short work of the clone troopers around Padme. But, as he was about to reach her, Padme's warning pierced through the chaos. Anakin, look out, she cried. From behind, the Grand Inquisitor, a fearsome foe, launched an attack on him. Anakin was quick to defend himself, their lightsabers clashing with intense fury. Yet, this fight was a distraction, and during their duel, another group of troopers seized the moment. They took Padme's children away from her and began to escort her to a different location. Driven by desperation, Anakin used the force to slam the Grand Inquisitor against the wall, hoping to end the battle swiftly so he could go rescue Padme and the children. As he finally reached Padme, she was being dragged away by the squad. She screamed not for her own safety, but for the children's, telling Anakin to save them instead. But by the time Anakin looked back, it was too late. The children were gone. As time ticked by, escaping from Mount Tantus became harder and harder. The place was quickly filling up with troops, making every second inside more dangerous than the last. Over his communicator, Rex urgently told Anakin that it was time to leave. He said that they had done everything they could and that Ahsoka was with him, safe. But Anakin, his heart heavy with worry, didn't want to leave without his children. The thought of leaving them behind was unbearable. Yet, there was Padme. Her safety was hanging by a thread. Anakin was torn. He wanted to save his children, to keep searching every corner of the base until he found them. But the longer they stayed, the more dangerous it became for Padme. The base was a maze of danger, with more and more troops swarming it. It was a nightmare scenario, and the risk of losing Padme in the chaos was too high. The situation was spiraling out of control. Anakin's mind raced with fear and desperation. He had to make a decision, and he had to make it fast. The sounds of battle echoed through the corridors, a grim reminder of the stakes. Anakin's heart ached with the thought of leaving his children behind, but he knew he couldn't risk Padme's life any longer. It was one of the hardest decisions he had ever had to make. With a heavy heart, Anakin made the choice to leave with Padme. Fleeing the base felt like running from a part of himself, but he knew it was the only way to keep her safe. As they made their escape, Anakin's mind was filled with turmoil. Years passed since the daring escape from Mount Tantus. Anakin and Padme, united by their resolve, never ceased their quest to find their children. But as the days turned into years, the galaxy they knew continued to change, often not for the better. The Empire, under the iron grip of Emperor Palpatine, grew stronger and more oppressive with each passing day. Its shadow stretched across countless worlds, extinguishing the light of freedom wherever it found it. In these dark times, the Jedi, once guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy, were now all but extinct. Hunted relentlessly by the Empire's agents, only a few remained scattered and hidden, preserving their lives in the shadows. The galaxy had largely forgotten the Jedi, their legacy fading into a myth. Amidst the backdrop of tyranny and fear, Padme and Anakin faced their own trials. The loss of their children was a wound that never fully healed, driving them to search the galaxy's farthest reaches for any trace of their whereabouts. Yet, with the Empire's ever watchful eyes and the Inquisitor's relentless hunts, their search was fraught with danger at every turn. Padme, whose spirit remained unbroken despite the years of hardship, found a 
new purpose in the shadows of the Empire's tyranny. Alongside Bail Organa, she worked tirelessly to sow the seeds of the rebellion. Their efforts were secretive and fraught with peril, for the Empire's reach was vast. They traveled in secret, meeting with leaders and sympathizers of worlds that still had spark of resistance. Together they laid the groundwork for what would one day become a unified rebellion against the Empire. These meetings were held in the utmost secrecy, often on remote planets or in hidden bases away from the prying eyes. Padme, using her diplomatic skills and her unwavering resolve, worked to unite these groups. She spoke of freedom, of the right to live without fear, and of the galaxy where the light could once again drive out the darkness. Her words, filled with passion and conviction, inspired many to join their cause. Anakin, too, played his part. Though his heart yearned to find his children, he knew the importance of standing against the Empire. He lent his skills to the growing rebellion, training those willing to fight that would weaken the Empire's grip on the galaxy. Yet, even as he fought for the rebellion's cause, his search for his children never ceased. Every mission, every journey was another opportunity to uncover the clues to their whereabouts. Within the same span of years that saw Anakin and Padme tirelessly search for their children and sow the seeds of the rebellion against the Empire, Luke and Leia grew under the watchful eye of Emperor Palpatine. Far from the loving gaze of their true parents, they were raised in the shadow of the dark side, molded by Palpatine's sinister influence. The Emperor, cunning and manipulative, presented himself as a father figure to the twins, nurturing their innate force abilities while ensnaring their hearts with darkness. Luke and Leia, unaware of their true heritage, were taught to harness their powers through the lens of the dark side. The Emperor's guidance twisted their perception, making them believe that power was the ultimate virtue and that compassion was a weakness. As they grew, so did their strength in the Force, making them among the most powerful Force users in the galaxy. They were prodigies of the dark side, their potential boundless and their loyalty to Palpatine unshakable. The twins were always trying to outdo each other, each seeking to prove their worth and strength to Palpatine. The sibling rivalry was encouraged by the Emperor, who saw it as a means to push them further into the depths of the dark side. He knew that pitting them against each other would only serve to deepen their reliance on his guidance and approval. This competition between Luke and Leia took a dark tragic turn. A confrontation fueled by years of manipulation and being rivals escalated beyond control. In a moment of unchecked anger and a desperate need to prove himself, Luke struck down Leia, believing that her elimination would cement his place as Palpatine's true apprentice and the heir to his dark legacy. The loss of Leia was a blow to the galaxy's hope, yet it marked Luke's complete fall to the dark side. Palpatine, ever the master manipulator, seized upon this moment to bind Luke even closer to him. Luke, now bereft of the only family he had ever known and consumed by guilt and power, became Palpatine's new apprentice. Under the Emperor's tutelage, Luke's power grew but so did his inner turmoil. As the galaxy edged closer to a precipice, the simmering tension between the Empire and the burgeoning rebellion erupted into a full-scale war. The Galactic Civil War, as it would come to be known, was not just a clash of military might, it was a battle for the soul of the galaxy, a fight between the suffocating grip of tyranny and the resilient spirit of freedom. At the forefront of the Empire's campaign to crush the Rebel Alliance was Luke, now serving as the Emperor's enforcer. His transformation was complete. The once innocent child, potentially destined for greatness on the light side, had become a harbinger of darkness. Under Palpatine's tutelage, Luke had grown powerful, his abilities in the Force unmatched by any other Imperial agent. His presence on the battlefield turned the tide of conflicts time and again. His name whispered in fear among the ranks of the Rebellion, yet within Luke a storm raged. The dark side had given him power, but at the cost of peace. He was haunted by visions of a life that could have been. Echoes of warmth and love that felt both alien and achingly familiar. Palpatine, ever watchful for signs of weakness, kept Luke close, fearing the latent power of Anakin Skywalker's legacy. With Luke unleashed on the galaxy tearing through the rebel ranks with ferocity of a storm, it wasn't long before Anakin and Padme heard of his deeds. The news was a dagger to their hearts, the reality of their son's actions almost too much to bear. But despair wasn't in their nature, it fueled the resolve instead. Anakin with a plan shimmering with both hope and danger, decided to draw Luke out to confront the darkness that had claimed their son. The bait was a rumor, a whisper of a Jedi stirring trouble on the dusty plains of Tatooine, a planet with deep personal connection to the Skywalker saga. It was a place of beginnings and endings, of hidden identities and emergent destinies. The rumor crafted with care was designed to catch the attention of the Empire to draw out its most fearsome weapon, Luke, 
now a hunter of his own kind. To Anakin's plan, Padme's heart ached with the mother's love and fear. She longed to stand by Anakin to face their son together, but Anakin, knowing the dangers that awaited, insisted she stay behind. Luke is not the child you remembered, he said, a shadow crossing his face. But I will bring him home, Padme. Trust me. His words were a promise, a vow steeped in the hope and pain of a father's love. Unbeknownst to Anakin, Padme couldn't stay away. Her love for her son, for her family, was a force unto itself. She snuck into the location of the planned confrontation, finding a hidden spot from which to watch. Her heart was a turmoil of fear and hope, every beat a silent prayer for the safety of her loved ones. As the team of Inquisitors, led by Luke, descended on Tatooine, the air crackled with the tension of impending conflict. They came, armed with the might of the Empire, to extinguish the supposed Jedi threat. But what awaited them was a trap, a father's desperate gambit to reclaim his son from the clutches of darkness. Anakin Skywalker, once known as the Chosen One, had reached a level of strength closer to his full potential than ever before. In the confrontation on Tatooine, he displayed power that overshadowed the Inquisitors, dispatching them with the speed and might that seemed almost divine. The desert stands were stirred into a storm with their duel, leaving only Anakin and Luke standing in a tense silence. Luke unshaken and displaying the strength nearly matching that of his father, stared Anakin down. It was then that Anakin, with hope of reaching his son, revealed the truth. He told Luke of his true parentage, that he, Anakin, was his father and Padme was his mother. But Luke seemed too far gone, too entrenched in the dark side's grip. With a cold determination, he ignited his saber, initiating a duel that would test both their fates. Anakin, however, had no intention of killing his son. Every move he made was an attempt to break through the dark veil that had enveloped Luke, to remind him of who he truly was, but it was to no avail. The battle escalated until Anakin was disarmed, finding himself at the mercy of Luke's saber pointed directly at his chest. From her hidden vantage point, Padme watched in horror, her heart breaking as she witnessed the unthinkable. In a desperate bid to reach their son, Anakin made one final attempt to pierce the darkness that had taken a hold of Luke. For a fleeting second, there was a spark of recognition, a chance that Luke might be there still. But then Luke plunged his saber into Anakin's chest. Padme's scream of anguish tore through the silence, her presence now revealed as she ran into the open, driven by her mother's desperate love. Luke feeling her familiar warmth, a distant memory from his infancy, paused, the realization of his actions drawing upon him. The warmth he felt from Padme clashed with the coldness of his deed, stirring mixed emotions within him. In that moment, the facade of the dark side began to crack, exposing the buried truth of his family and the horror of what he had just done. Luke, his mind a storm of conflicting emotions, let Padme go and returned to Coruscant. He walked through the imposing halls of the Imperial Palace, every step heavy with the weight of what he had just done, until he reached the Emperor's throne room. There, in a gesture of loyalty and victory, he knelt before Emperor Palpatine, presenting Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber. The Emperor, with a smile that spoke of dark satisfaction, was both shocked and pleased. In his eyes, Luke's act had firmly tethered him to the dark side. However, Luke's heart had undergone a transformation. The realization of his actions against his father, spurred by the encounterment with his mother, had ignited a change within him. Seeking the truth, Luke asked the Emperor if what Anakin had said was true. Palpatine, ever the manipulator, confirmed the truth but twisted the narrative. He claimed that Anakin had abandoned Luke as a child and that if it weren't for Palpatine's intervention, Luke would have perished. This manipulation aimed at securing Luke's loyalty instead sparked an intense anger within him. Driven by a surge of emotion, Luke lunged at Palpatine. The Skywalker blood, renowned for its connection to the Force, combined with his training in the dark side made Luke a formidable opponent. The throne room became a battleground, the air crackling with the energy of their duel. Palpatine, though taken aback by the sudden betrayal, was a master of the dark side himself. The fight was fierce with Luke channeling his anger and his newfound resolve, but despite his strength and skill, Luke was still inexperienced in facing an opponent as powerful and cunning as Palpatine. The duel reached its climax as Palpatine, using his deep knowledge of the dark side, managed to disarm Luke. The lightsaber clattered to the ground, and Luke found himself at the mercy of the very master he sought to overthrow. The Emperor's laughter echoed through the throne room, a chilling reminder of the power he wielded. Just as all hope seemed lost for Luke, a moment of profound intervention changed the course of destiny. Anakin Skywalker, alongside Leia, appeared beside Luke as a force ghost. This moment was a rare convergence of past and future, a testament to the enduring strength of the Skywalker lineage. 
Anakin and Leia, manifestations of the light side of the Force, each placed a hand on Luke's shoulders. Their presence was calming, a stark contrast to the tempest of emotions and conflict that raged within and around him. The touch of his family, their love and strength flowing into him, ignited a profound change in Luke. It was as if the veil of darkness that had clouded his vision was lifted, allowing him to see the true power within, a power not of anger and hatred, but of resilience. Leia, whose life had been cut tragically short by Luke's own hand, was a symbol of forgiveness and unconditional love. Together, they embodied the balance of the Force, the potential for change and the possibility of overcoming even the deepest of scars. With a renewed strength and clarity, Luke stood to face Palpatine once more. This time, he was not driven by anger or a desire for vengeance, but a deeper understanding of his purpose and the legacy of the Skywalkers. He engaged Palpatine with a calm determination, a stark contrast to the fury that had fueled his initial confrontation. The battle resumed, but Luke's approach had changed. He fought not just with the skill of a Jedi, but with the heart of a true Skywalker. His movements were guided by the light side of the Force, a reflection of his newfound resolve to end Palpatine's reign of terror and bring balance to the Force. In the end, Luke's transformation fueled by the support of Anakin and Leia's spirits proved too much for Palpatine. The Emperor, despite his immense power, could not overcome the combined strength of the Skywalker family united across time by the Force. The defeat of Palpatine marked a turning point in the galaxy's history. Luke, standing in the Emperor's throne room, felt the weight of his actions and sacrifices that had led to this moment. He understood that his path forward would be one of rebuilding, rebuilding the galaxy and rebuilding the bonds of family and love the dark side had sought to destroy. As Anakin and Leia's spirits faded, their presence leaving a lasting warmth in Luke's heart. He knew his path ahead would be challenging, but with the legacy of the Skywalkers and the light side of the Force as his guide, Luke Skywalker was ready to face the future and bring hope back to the galaxy.